breast density. Does it really matter? Let's find out. Breast density has become a hot topic over the last couple of years. And the main issue is the fact that some women's breasts are composed almost entirely of fatty tissue, while other women's breasts are composed primarily of dense fibroglandular tissue. You can see the great disparity uh, in these two mammograms. So the American College of Radiology BIRAD system has divided breast density into four main categories, A through D. And you can see uh, the gradual increase in density among these examples. When it comes to breast density, really there's only two categories or two buckets that matter. And that is that an arbitrary line has been drawn between category B and C. A and B, uh, fatty breast tissue and scattered breast tissue, are considered not dense. Well, any woman who has heterogeneously dense or extremely dense breast tissue uh, is considered having dense breast tissue. First category is fatty breast tissue. The actual uh, BIRAD's wording is that the breasts are almost entirely fatty. This is basically where there is less than 25% fibroglandular tissue present within the breast. Uh, it's about 10% of women that have this type of breast tissue. If you had your preference, you would prefer that every woman's mammogram looked like this because it's very, very easy uh, to identify a breast cancer uh, when the tissue is composed almost entirely of fat. The second category, category B, uh, is the scattered category. Uh, the official wording is the breasts are composed of scattered fibroglandular elements. This is when there's between 25 to 50 percent fibroglandular tissue within the breast. Um, it's almost 40 percent of women that have this type of breast tissue. Category C is heterogeneous. Uh, the breasts are heterogeneously dense, which may obscure detection of small masses. This is when there's between 50 to 75 percent uh, fibroglandular tissue, and it's nearly 40 percent of women that have this type of breast tissue. So again, this is the first category that uh, is considered dense breast tissue. The other interesting thing about this category is that it does start to uh, confer a slight increased risk in developing breast cancer. So there's a relative risk of about 1.2 uh, the numbers vary a little bit depending on the study you look at, but definitely uh, literature has shown that there is a slight increased risk of developing breast cancer when you have denser breast tissue. And then the last category is category D, uh, extremely dense. And the official wording is the breasts are extremely dense, which lowers the sensitivity of mammography. Um, this is when there's between 75 and 100 percent fibroglandular tissue within the breast. Fortunately, it's only about 10 percent of women that have this type of breast tissue. Um, but if you look at the mammogram, you can see that you would be very limited uh, trying to identify a breast cancer due to the volume of dense fibroglandular tissue. This category uh, confers an even higher relative risk. It's roughly the same as having one first degree relative uh, who has developed breast cancer at a postmenopausal age. So uh, certainly a, a significant increased risk um, if you have extremely dense breast tissue. Now there are some challenges with uh, assigning mammograms to those four categories. And one of the main ones is that not everyone's breast tissue is evenly distributed. Uh, some women have areas of focally dense tissue where they have this patch or clump of tissue in one particular area. Uh, this is an example. What uh, the newest fifth edition of BIRAD's manual states is that if you feel that the interpretation is limited in that particular area um, where you'd have a harder time identifying a breast cancer, then uh, they recommend upgrading. So uh, if this was normally a, a category B, uh, scattered fibroglandular tissue, um, but you see this one particular clump where it's a little bit denser, um, you certainly are able to upgrade this to a category C heterogeneously dense breast tissue. A person's breast density is not uh, a static thing. Uh, it changes over time. Uh, and there are many things that can decrease the density. The most common is probably normal aging. So as a woman ages, particularly after menopause, oftentimes the breasts get a little bit less dense. It's not usually a dramatic change, but um, if someone's very near that threshold of, of dense versus uh, not dense tissue, sometimes it can be enough to uh, push a patient uh, down into the not dense category. The other uh, most common thing is weight gain. So if a patient weight increases um, even just a few pounds, but certainly more than that, um, that can affect the, uh, and decrease the breast density. 
uh, medications. Uh, if a patient is taking hormones and then goes off of hormones, that can sometimes affect um, breast density and decrease their density. And then lastly, surgery. So some women will have uh, reduction mammoplasty, uh, where they actually remove uh, a large percentage of the uh, dense fibroglandular tissue and the breast may become uh, more fatty after surgery. And then uh, there are also many things that increase breast density. Any woman who's pregnant or breastfeeding uh, will have very dense tissue uh, during that time period. Weight loss is another common one. So if, uh, if a woman loses a significant amount of weight, uh, usually they'll lose some of the fatty tissue within the breast, and so the breast will become more dense. Um, and then the last one is uh, hormone replacement. So several medications, um, if you start uh, taking hormones, will uh, cause the breast to, uh, density to increase. Now, how do we actually determine breast density? So the old way um, was by visual determination. So the radiologist would simply choose a BIRADS density category while looking at the film uh, or the image. Uh, this is very, very subjective. Um, what you find is that some radiologists tend to call almost everyone uh, dense. Uh, other people will undercall. Uh, there's significant intra and inter observer variability if you rely on the visual determination. So what has come about in the uh, last several years is these automated volumetric methods. Um, so this is basically um, where you have a software that measures the volume of fibroglandular tissue and divides that by the total volume of tissue. This is much more reproducible, much more accurate than the visual determination. You get much more even distribution of density uh, among the four categories um, and also uh, much less subjective. So there are several uh, different software products on the market uh, that can do this. Volpara, uh, Quanta, Quantra, and Libra are some of the uh, more common ones. Now, the story of breast density and really the importance of it really begins in Connecticut. Um, so in 2004, Nancy Capello um, was uh, having her regular um, screening mammogram, and she'd been having screening mammograms uh, faithfully every single year uh, for many, many years. Um, and then one day, um, several months after her mammogram, she felt a lump, a palpable lump within her breast. Uh, she went to have it evaluated and was found to have a fairly large mass uh, on ultrasound. Um, this turned out to be a, a fairly advanced breast cancer. And she was shocked that she could have this finding within her breast, even though she had been having mammograms every single year. She was even more uh, upset by the fact that her radiologist and her uh, physicians did not seem to be very surprised about it. They said, well, you have dense breast tissue um, that uh, obscures things on the mammogram. Uh, she didn't like that answer. She didn't like that she was not uh, aware of her breast density and that these ultrasounds weren't performed um, proactively ahead of time uh, as opposed to waiting till uh, she felt a lump. And so uh, she made this issue of breast density and breast density notification uh, her life's work. Uh, and Connecticut led the charge as the first state that mandated breast density notification. Um, and it has uh, swept the nation, swept the United States since that time, um, with now the majority of, of states having some sort of breast density legislation. What she was talking about, what her situation highlights, uh, is just one of the main limitations of mammography. If you have the x-ray beam uh, from the mammogram uh, going through the breast. Uh, if you have a clump of dense tissue, uh, as illustrated here, in the same area where you have the, the mass or the, the breast cancer, oftentimes that will obscure uh, the underlying breast cancer. So on the mammogram, you'll see just the clump of dense tissue, but you won't be able to see uh, the underlying malignancy. So this overlap and superimposition of normal structures uh, leads to false negative findings. And on a mammogram or in mammography, false negative findings means missed breast cancers. So this is called the masking effect related to breast density. And so here's just another example you can see in the fatty breast. Uh, it's very easy to see uh, the little speculated mass, um, whereas when a patient has uh, a lot of dense fibroglandular tissue, it's much more difficult to identify the malignancy. So this is the masking effect. Uh, just to beat home that point, here's another example. You can see the uh, fatty breast uh, tissue and the dense breast tissue. Uh, if you put this little spiculated mass in the fatty breast, it's very easy to identify that on a screening mammogram, um, whereas if the mass is in a 
dense breast, it's much, much more difficult uh, to identify that little speculated mass. And so uh, that causes these false negative uh, mammogram reads. Dense breast tissue, there's really two issues. One is the masking effect where it's harder to identify uh, and detect breast cancer. Um, it causes this decrease in mammographic sensitivity uh, and can lead to false negative exams. Um, and as we talked about earlier, the other issue is the increased risk of malignancy. Breast density is now included in the newest uh, risk assessment models. Uh, Tyra Kuzik version 8 includes breast density as, as one of the risk factors. Um, in general, the more dense the breast tissue is, the higher the uh, risk. And it does seem that this has a greater impact on risk as a woman ages. So typically the breasts become more fatty replaced um, after menopause and as a person ages. A woman who has uh, extremely dense breast tissue at age 30 uh, does not confer as high a risk as if a woman in her 70s has extremely dense uh, breast tissue. Here's a map again showing how widespread breast density notification has become within the United States. You can see the vast majority of states um, now have some density notification or effort to uh, inform or educate uh, patients. Uh, and now many of the uh, states are starting to mandate insurance coverage for supplemental screening with ultrasound. Now, despite uh, this movement, um, one of the things that does oftentimes lag behind that is radiology practices ability to deal with this effectively and offer supplemental screening at a scale uh, for the large number of women who qualify. Thank you for watching. Please click subscribe to see more of our content or go to mammoguide.com to learn more about breast imaging.